look in the last couple of weeks that you're having fun. Right. Is right. it fun to run for president of the United States? Some days. Yes. Some days. It, it really is fun. Some days it's just very hard work and you do so many events, you do kind of lose track of where you are. Mm -hmm. But most days, something happens during the day that really makes you feel like, yes, I know why I'm doing this. I am so committed. And it's because somebody said something to me on a rope line. Well, or, that, that leads me to my next yeah, question. Right. Why are you doing this? Why, right. why do you want, this is the question Ted Kennedy could not answer yeah. in 1979. Right. Why do you want to be president of the United States? I want to be president because I want to build on the progress that we've been making and make it possible for more people in our country, particularly young people, to live up to their own God-given potential. And that means we've got to get back to providing opportunities. We've got to get back to making the economy work for everybody. And we have to defend the progress we've made in women's rights and gay rights. And we have to protect voting rights and immigrant rights and everything else. But how do we do that? You are. Those are, you know, those are noble goals, and, and you are the fifth presidential candidate I've, I've had on the show so far. And uh, Bernie uh, Sanders was sitting mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and he said many of the same things. Mm -hmm. And his answers are a democratic socialist answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and in the debate uh, with, with uh, Senator Sanders, you said the United States is not Denmark. No, That's Denmark right. has those things, and they right. have those things with right. high taxes on the middle class. Right. And how would we achieve them in the United States, mm -hmm. aside from the political paralysis of Washington? How do you get those things? Well, first of all, we've got to get back to putting the middle class at the center of our politics. And we've got to make it clear that what has been tried by uh, the Republicans every time they get a chance, uh, cutting taxes on the super wealthy, getting out of the way of corporations, doesn't create broad-based prosperity. It creates more inequality. And I believe, and I think the evidence supports this, that the economy does better when we have a Democrat in the White House because you do have to work against some pretty powerful forces, but at least you're there. You're pushing back all the time. The middle class is one of the great inventions of our country. I came out of the middle class. My grandfather was a factory worker, but my dad became a small businessman. And I know this is possible and must exist if people are going to believe uh, that this country is as great as I think it is. So. I'm going to go back and do what I know works, build on what President Obama did, because look at the mess he inherited. You know, I love it when you have Republicans on here, and they act like we all have amnesia. I mean, we had the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. And my husband handed over 23 million new jobs, incomes rising for everybody, a balanced budget and a surplus, and President Obama got the worst economy where we were losing 800,000 jobs a month. So we've got to get back to making the middle class the center of our politics, raising incomes, and giving kids uh, a better shot. Well, you, you said you... <laughs> That's a cheap trick saying things people like. <laughs> Well, it's you, the way you said I was 23. Raised. You say yeah. 23 million jobs yes. were handed over. Right. Like 23 right. million jobs were, uh, created, were created, created during the, your, your mm -hmm. husband's administration. Right. The implication of that is that we get uh, the 90s back again if you're president of the United States. No. Do I have to wear parachute pants and slap bracelets? And are we going to have to all get jiggy with it? Well. <laughs> You'd look pretty good in parachute pants. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. I have the hips for it. No, no. It. Yes. I saw you out here dancing. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, John, he's good. I really yes. think so. But it's not the Clinton no. administration 2.0. No, I'm You're not running. You're a different running. person. I'm not running for my husband's third term. I'm not running for President Obama's third term. I'm running for my first term, but I'm going to do what works. And we have an understanding of what works. And. You know, the, the wealthy need to pay more. I'm just sorry to break it to you. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and we need... I am, conf I am conflicted yes. Uh, recently. Yes, I know. I understand. And we have to raise the minimum wage. It's a poverty wage now. It's disgraceful that people are working full-time and can't get out of poverty. We need to incentivize more profit sharing. Uh -huh. We need to continue to rein in the abuses in the financial uh, system, and particularly on Wall Street, because it did contribute to the problems we had in the economy. Now, so you all had of that a plan. has to be done. You put forth a plan I did. for reforming Wall Street, and Wall Street embraced it. 
Is that a good sign? Well, <laughs> I, I'm not sure who you're talking about because I, I, I certainly didn't get that message if they mm -hmm. did. Yeah. Uh, Paul Krugman, you know, the columnist for the New York Times, sure. uh, Nobel Proves. Prize winning yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. economist, said that I came out with a tough, comprehensive, effective plan because what I did, which is uh, really looking at the problems that we have and trying to preempt the problems of the future, is to recognize that. You know, we don't just have big banks in our economy that pull a lot of strings and make a lot of decisions. Look at what happened in 08. We had a big insurance company that had to be bailed out. We had an investment bank, Lehman Brothers, that failed. We, we have to look at the whole financial system. So and my you're plan does that. If you're president yes. and, 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 the banks, and the banks are failing, do we let them fail this yes. time? Yes, yes. We let them fail yes. this time. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Yes, yes. First of all, under, under Dodd-Frank, that is what will happen because uh -huh. we now have stress tests and I'm going to impose a risk fee on the big bank if they, if they engage in, in what risky behavior. But they have to know, their shareholders please? have to know that yes, they will fail. And if they're too big to fail, then under my plan and others that have been proposed, they may have to be broken up because if you can't manage it, then it's more likely to fail. Okay. Can you at least just get back from them the three dollars they charge us to take twenty dollars out of an ATM machine? You know what? We need to go after that too, don't oh, you think? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, that's who, usurious. Who would you rather run against, uh, Donald Trump or Ben Carson? I'm going to leave that to the Republicans. You think? I, 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 I it looks it's a likely choice, likely choice yeah. for those two guys. Yeah, but if I say one or the other, it might influence some people, and I don't want to have any influence on it. I want them to go through whatever their process is, because okay. if I am fortunate enough to be the nominee, I want to run hard against whichever Republican is up there. But you can picture either one of them in the, in the office, right? You can picture either one of those guys in the office. <laughs> well, I, I, can, I can picture them in some office. <laughs> <laughs>